Franco presents The Amazing Princess Sarah! All right, this is actually gonna be a shorter review, but Amazing Princess Sarah was actually one of those games where it's like, you know, I saw it, I thought this was just gonna be run-of-the-mill platformer, just gonna like, that's it. But no, this one actually turned out to be, well, something else. So, good, bad, ugly, how are we gonna score this? Let's go. First, the story. And the story is lame. So Lilith kidnaps, tricks, something or other, the king. It's kind of hard to follow, but at the end you have to fight for the king. And it's like ghosts and goblins, okay? Or actually, is it ghosts and ghouls? I forget which one came first. But you have to play through the game multiple times to get the real ending. I don't like that. I, I don't like it, but to make it worth your while, they keep inventing new ways to do the gameplay. Now, um, it's cool because, like, your first playthrough, it's normal. Second, you get this little ghost following you of yourself that can't touch you, otherwise you die. Sweet. It's good that you guys are trying to mix it up, trying to do something so that each playthrough is not the same game. Great. But story-wise, though, I, I just I don't like the fact that you know, I don't like the fact right off the bat that it's like, all right, play multiple times to get it. And it's not even like different angles. So ah, I'm giving the story a two out of five. Challenge. Booyah. This game is killer. This is like playing old school Ninja Gaiden and stuff. This is one of those games that hates you. And if you screw up, it will put you in a place where it's a world of hurt. But now the thing is, is, is the game doesn't feel unfair. At least for the most part, I, I, I can't really say I felt like the game overall was just unfair. Because it's not like you just totally get pwned by everything all at once. Um, like some of the games that I play were just defenseless. You know, but there are times where it's like, hey, you get knocked off a ledge or something. Blah! So from a challenge standpoint, though, I would give this game a solid four. It definitely was a fun game. It definitely had good challenge and appeal. It, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Gameplay. Gameplay is very simple. This game is simplistic. You, you beat enemies with your sword. Once they're down, you pick them up and you throw them. You throw enemies at other enemies and that's how you play. If an enemy's too big, you can't jump. Otherwise, you're throwing enemies, so it feels kind of like Mario. Unlike Mario, though, enemies don't just, like, miraculously respawn in your hands or revive in your hands, whatever you want to call it. So, the game keeps it simple, though, and the bosses are challenging. Um, very, very methodical, very, they have their set patterns, but I would give this game, from a gameplay standpoint, a solid four. I mean, it, it does well with what it's got. Not, not much bells and whistles, but for a two-button control, by the way, you could actually run this game on a 3DS or something. Or even, you could run this on a Game Boy Advance, guys. Maybe not for all the graphics and everything, but still, uh, it's playable on pretty much any system so long as you got two buttons and a joystick. Sweet! Fun factor, and I had a lot of fun with this game. This is one that I actually looked forward to when I was getting my review together. I looked forward to the next play and the next play and the next play. Amazing Princess Sarah is just amazingly fun. The game doesn't, it doesn't strive to do too much. And that's what made it fun. There's something simplistic about it. It's a throwback to the old school gaming. And that's, learn from indie developers. Harukendo, Her, uh, oh gosh, Harukendo, Harukendo, these guys, the guys who made it, <laughs> I have issues with their name. Uh, they did a great job of focusing on a limited set of things and doing it well. And that is one of the things that is just booyah, awesome. But now we get into the morals. Is this a family friendly game? And for the most part, I'd say yes, but I'm giving this a three. Why a three? Naked princess. If you play through the game enough times, you can unlock 
the naturalist, they call it, which is just basically a censored version of Sarah running around naked. And so if, if you have issues with that, you may not want your kids playing it. Additionally, the game itself um, does have some blood. It, it, do, it does deal with a lot of mythological creatures and so forth. And that makes it that makes it definitely less family friendly, especially if you're on the uber conservative side. Uh, would I play this one with my family, with my kids? Probably, actually, but not the naked princess stuff and whatnot. The cartoony aspect of it is what keeps it uh, from going overboard in many ways. Because a lot of stuff, Mortal Kombat. If you think about it, Mortal Kombat X is really horrific because it looks real. But if you did Mortal Kombat with Legos. It, it, it would just look silly. And that's the way they do it in this one. Plus, you have a sword. You're going out whipping stuff around. And I would say this. I would say uh, some of the demons and stuff they put in there have some questionable imagery. Looks like they're, they're, they had something on the mind that was... Adults will say when they rendered some of these so uh play through the game you can definitely catch that in some of the some of the boss fights but i would definitely give this a three uh averaging this game at 3.6 out of five it is not a great game but it was a fun game it was it's one i enjoy and you know what i paid about five bucks for this one it was worth it ten bucks it's up to you up to you Whoa gamer though, saying, what do you think? Like, subscribe, comment, share. Support link below helps us out, by the way. Make your Amazon purchases through our support link. Uh, we'll catch you next time with another review. Thanks for watching.